Hey there, YouTube, everyone. Thanks for watching. We're back on. Finally cracked open the box of my Sakura D4 made by 3 Racing. This is the rear wheel drive version. So excited to get this build going finally. I've just been too busy. Sorry about that. Uh, some tips and things to work on your D4. Uh, I've got extensive experience on building and modding and fully optioned on my fully optioned D3. So first off on the chassis, it's a good idea to put a layer of super glue along the edges around the edges of the chassis. Next up after you've assembled the bag one and bag two with the suspension arms, make sure to double check if there's any binding. If there's any binding and a suspension hangs, it's gonna make it so much harder to tune and you're not gonna be able to tune the setup properly properly it'll be harder to drive because it'll catch on certain things so make sure nothing's binding when you set up the suspension arms next up of course as along with uh, most RC builds if you're using your metric screws and screwing into any metal parts uh, make sure you use some blue thread lock so it doesn't back out due to vibrations Here I'm assembling the plastic and the aluminum parts. That's gonna be the motor mount. And as they get pieced together, they're gonna get screwed in from the bottom. I'm using this uh, metric uh, measuring uh, so I can make sure I'm using the right size length screws because some of them use six millimeter, some are eight millimeter. So I just wanna make sure I don't mix them up because there are no extra screws. They just give you the exact amount that you need. So with this new D4, they've used a better plastic as opposed to the old D3. On the old D3, you pretty much had to pre-thread the holes into the plastic. Otherwise, um, I ended up stripping a lot of screws initially until I figured out that they needed to be you'd want to, I pre-threaded them with a with a threading tool then everything went smoothly after that but initially I had to get extra screws because I along with most people that's built the D3 they all know that it's a different plastic from this one so I think there'll be better give on this one compared to the D3 um, so can't wait to get this and get it set up and go for trial runs Do not over tighten it. You don't want to strip the plastic either. Um, I do have a lot of hop up parts already for it, but I decided to build it stock first and then go from that. And I'll probably do, do piece by piece. I don't think, even though I probably have, I think I have most of the option parts already in aluminum and carbon fiber, but I'll just like I did with the D3, I'll probably upgrade it one or a couple of pieces at a time. Again, measuring my screws to make sure I got the right ones. Uh, part of the main shaft that where the spur gear attaches to, uh, I forgot to put in a spacer and then attach the carrier and the spur gear. So make sure you don't forget that spacer. As I was assembling the drive cups, these parts for sure would probably be one of the biggest ones you're going to want to upgrade along with the plastic gear um, if it holds up that end or the belt probably going to want to make sure you got extra belts handy you don't want to be stuck waiting for a couple of weeks for a belt if you snap one um, over the course on my D3 have replaced some of the belts um, these drive cups the factory ones are plastic so they're probably gonna strip. So the pulleys, they're plastic also. Uh, I would say at least extra pulleys, either in plastic or if you want, probably the aluminum would be a better bet. So again, this is the drive shaft where at, that attaches to the spur gear. Um, as you can see here, I'm putting it together and then as I put it through the motor mount, um, and then I started assembling the pin that goes in through 
the spur gear holder I forgot to put in that spacer in between uh, which keeps the bearing in place into the motor mount so make sure you don't forget that other uh, the third uh, pink aluminum piece that comes in that bag uh, don't forget to put that in so then finally putting together the other half of the motor mount tightening the screws again those are going into aluminum so I did use thread lock as you can see I, I got a little bit of the blue thread lock on the manual there as I put the screws down uh, yep one other thing as you're assembling together the bearings and the bearing holders that go into the bearing mounts uh, which is just behind the motor mount on the rear part the bearing carriers are the ones that attach to that shaft basically the axle and the gear that drives the axle uh, there's a couple of bearing holders on there which is adjustable and that's basically how you adjust the tension on the belt make sure um, if you look at the instructions closely it's an A and a B on the left and right side so if you accidentally put B and a B together or an A and A together and you try to run this thing you're gonna see that it'll wobble because they're not aligned correctly so those are that's it for this one thank you very much thanks for watching and please don't forget to click subscribe put in any comments on the bottom if you have any questions that I may be able to help you with um, as always I'd always like and share and subscribe thanks a lot have a good night